If you look ahead in the book of Genesis, say for Boratius, chapters 25, 35, and 49, you'll see the three passages that detail the death of each one of the patriarchs. And you'll see, if you look in the Hebrew, an unusual word used, yigva. The sages explain that that word is used in connection with the death of the righteous. It is a particular, completely painless manner of death. The person becomes completely unconscious and numb, not feeling anything before the moment of death. If you have to go, that's the way to do it. You may be surprised then if you look at this week's Torah portion, chapter 6, verse 17. God is telling Noah, Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. The world is so wicked that I'm going to wipe it out. So I want you to build an ark of specific dimensions, take your family and representatives of the animal kingdom inside it, and I'm going to destroy the entire rest of the world. But the word God uses there for that destruction is, surprisingly, yigva. I thought that was the death of the righteous. Why would the wicked generation of the flood merit such a painless death instead of a violent, brutal death by drowning? One commentator explains that they merited it due to God's mercy in connection with Noah's righteousness. God knew that Noah was going to be building that ark for 120 years, and he didn't want to torture him with the thought that he was going to suffer through the agonizing deaths of the rest of the world. So you reassured him at the outset, I'm going to destroy them, but it's going to be painless. And sure enough, when the time comes, look at chapter 7, verse 21, you'll see it again. Yigva, they died a painless death to spare Noah and his family the post-traumatic stress of having lived through the screams of all the rest of the world drowning. So that entire and entirely wicked generation of the flood merited a special painless death due to Noah's righteousness. And now, maybe we can lawyer up and defend Noah a little bit. He's taken to task by the commentators for failing to attempt to dissuade God from his plan to wipe out the rest of humanity in the flood. His story is contrasted with one that's coming up soon in the Torah. The story of Abraham, Avraham, when he's told by God that God plans to wipe out the city of Sodom and its four surrounding cities. And Avraham immediately goes to work pleading and begging with God to spare them. Noah doesn't do that. But one second, let's compare the two cases. Avraham was not told that the death of the people of Sodom was going to be painless. In fact, when it happens, it's through fire and sulfur from heaven, agonizing deaths. Noah was told right at the outset that the deaths of the rest of the world are going to be painless. Now, maybe you can still fault him for not having argued and tried to persuade God not to go through with his plan, not to kill them. But is it fair, I ask you, to compare that story with the one of Avraham, where there was no similar reassurance that the death was going to be painless? Food for thought. I'll let you think about it. Mm -hmm.